I am in such a life slump. I need all the romance. Not the plot thickening. Don't be dumping me for your best friend. I just want to go to my happy place. We're actually not gonna let her read. You better spit that game. You better talk that talk, Miles. Would I read another Emily Henry book? Watching it all unfold. Yeah. I'm not scared of commitment. I'm just scared of doing something wrong. I don't wanna see you go. Cause baby, I got problems. Sometimes it gets hard for me to tell you how I feel I'm afraid to show you it's underneath Cause I don't wanna let you down Got a lot of demons up in my brain Got a lot of bad thoughts giving me pain I'm afraid to show you it's underneath Cause I don't wanna let you down Hi friends, I am so happy to be back in front of you guys. I have been in such a life slump and I really, really needed to have a release of endorphins. So I was like, what better way to accomplish that than to go to a bookstore? But I didn't buy a single book. There were so many cute books, there was such a vibe, but there was nothing that was screaming to me like, oh, you need to bring this home with you. So I was just like, I said, I'll go home and read the books that I already bought, which I did buy a newly released romance book. That's just been the mood that I've been in. I need something that's light and fun and fluffy, lighthearted. So I did pick up the new Abby Jimenez book just for the summer. This is actually going to be my introduction to this author. I heard so many good things about yours truly. And I think she also wrote A Part of Your World or something like that. Heard great things about that book as well. I'm definitely not in a reading slump, but I have been picking up books and putting them right back down. I'm not even gonna lie. I don't wanna force this space. I told husband like, you know what? It's getting so bad. I don't even wanna read. And if I'm not gonna read, then maybe I just shouldn't even do YouTube anymore and he's like okay listen you don't have to do YouTube if you don't want to but you need to read he's like reading is your thing it brings you so much joy it is important you need it for your sanity so he's like I can deal with a lot of things but I am not gonna tolerate you just giving up on something that you absolutely love and so I'm just grateful to be on this journey with him and to do life with him because the reminder was needed hope you guys are doing well I've been doing well enough it's just been a lot going on we're dealing with some regression with justice I I've been looking for a full-time job and I am happy to report that I did find one. <laughs> I am so happy and I think it's going to be the perfect fit. God's timing is absolutely perfect. It may not happen when we want it to happen, but it happens exactly when it is supposed to. Amen. Amen. Just for the Summer is about two people hoping to find their soulmate after dating each other. You're probably like, wait, what? <laughs> Let me explain. So our male main character, Justin, he uploads a Reddit thread talking about how his exes go on to find their soulmate right after they break up with each other. Emma sees the post and she reaches out to tell Justin the same thing happens to her. They decide it would be a good idea to date each other four dates, a kiss, and then break up so they can finally find their true soulmate. Let me share my initial thoughts. So the book is super cute. Abby Jimenez, her writing style, I don't know why, but people spoke so highly of it. I did expect to be blown away and I am not. It's not bad. It's reading exactly like what I need at this time, but I do feel like it's very juvenile at times. I'm like, is this YA? I do need to look up and see if it's YA because it's definitely reading YA to me anyway. Sometimes a conversation will just end and then we'll switch to something else. And I feel like right here, we probably could have expanded the conversation a little bit more but I do like the balance between contemporary and romance that she has going on so far in this book. It is blurbed by Emily Henry and her new book comes out this week as well. So those are the two books that I plan to read this week to help me get out of this life slump.
Justin is so cute. I think I like his character a little bit more than I like Emma. He sees what he wants and he's kind of going after it. He's clearly attracted to her, even though they're in like this fake dating relationship and she's actually attracted to him as well. She's a lot more closed off because she has like some mom issues going on. She doesn't really like to get too attached or take root. And he definitely has some issues going on as well. His mother has got herself in a bit of a situation, okay? And so he is definitely gonna be taking over guardianship of his siblings very soon. But he's still just so considerate. He's very sweet. It's like, how can you not be attracted to this guy? Like as the reader, he's definitely like a book boyfriend. He's so cute. I'm not overly obsessed with the writing style. However, it is extremely easy to read. It's very easy to process and digest. It's very relaxed. It's very relatable. And it is exactly what I need at this time. So he sends her this little multiple choice questionnaire. It's so freaking cute. And basically he's just asking what type of food she likes. What does she like to wear? How does she like to be greeted and stuff like that. And then he sends her like a little formal invitation. So cheesy, so corny, so just mm, exactly what I need right now in this season. Like I'm eating it up. I am eating it up. She's fake reading you guys. I'm literally <laughs> reading. Oh my God. It's just for this clip. We're actually not gonna let her read. I see. Really not. <laughs> like, trying to read my book. <laughs> One of my favorite lines, it says, why not forgive? In a world where you can choose anger or empathy, always choose empathy. That is so much easier said than done. As someone who struggles with forgiveness, I am a lot better. I've come a very long way. I am quicker to forgive because I do realize that forgiveness is for you. It's not necessarily for the other person. And so absolutely love that perspective here in the book. But anyway, if you watched my last video, I believe I was like recommending books with like neurodiverse representation, which if you have not watched that video, there was some really good books in there. I'll go ahead and link that for you. But anyway, at the end, I did say that the Amazon truck came and I did get new books. So I'll show you guys the new books that I got. This was one of those books. And then we also have a couple sequels, actually. I really enjoyed Bear Town. I did do a reading vlog of that. So if you did not see it, I will link that as well. But this is the second book in the series. It's Us Against You by Frederick Bachman. This book, oh, I did have the pleasure of already reading it. It was really good. It was off to a very slow start and it did take me a while to read it. But once I got involved and invested in the story and once something wildly sad and climactic happening with one of our favorite characters in the book I just couldn't stop reading what I will say is <laughs> reading this book I was able to give Bear Town a five star highly recommend however the ending I just felt like where is the redemption where is the justice for a particular character in the book oh it just drove me nuts and so here we do get to see how the tragedy and the trauma that occurred in the first book, how it affects the town, how it affects these families, how it can affect a marriage and how it affects each individual. It's really good. It's a really good walk through healing and recovery. And I really enjoyed it. I really did. Kind of just was in a mood where I wanted things that were light and fun and cozy. So I was like, well, let me get back into my girl Pip. So I went ahead and I ordered Good Girl, Bad Blood. I did read this book as well. I feel like if you like podcasts, you'll really like this book. If you like true crime, you will really enjoy this book. Love the self-discovery that Pip is having in this particular book. I'm not even sure where we're gonna go in the third book, but I am very excited. I will be buying the third book to both of these series and I cannot wait. And the last book that I got, it is new to me. Never heard of this book. It's called Booked for Murder by Jasmine Webb. And I just was looking up stuff online, like summer mysteries. This book came up, never heard anybody talking about it. So if you have read it, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Basically, we have a main character, Poppy. She's serves a donut to a customer and I guess the customer ends up falling dead and now she's looked at as the main suspect. Bad timing and I think we might have a little subplot here of romance because it says can Poppy trust the journalist with adorable dimples who insist he's only after the truth. So I don't know maybe maybe not. I just think it's gonna be fun and funny and lighthearted, and that's exactly what I need right now. But I just wanted to 
to go ahead and give you guys a quick little book haul. I am gonna go ahead and get back to reading Abby Jimenez because release day for Emily Henry was today, baby. And so I did go and attempt to buy the book, but then I found out that the audiobook is being read by Julia Whalen, and I absolutely love Julia Whalen. I went ahead and just downloaded the book because I was like, mm, if Julie is reading, I feel like the audio experience is gonna be lit. If I start to absolutely love this book or if I'm not enjoying the audio experience and I feel like I need the physical copy, then we will go and get that. Other than that, Julia Whalen is doing her thing per usual. I do absolutely love the friendship that she has with her friend. Her and her friend are actually travel nurses, which is so freaking cool. They go somewhere, they do an assignment, and then they leave. She does have some serious like attachment issues. She doesn't like to take root anywhere, and it has a lot to do with her childhood. I just love the friend. I'm actually re-watching Girlfriends, the TV show, and it is so cute, and it hits so different. I guess when it aired, it was in 2000s. I was in high school, and now as like a full-grown woman in her 30s, the show hits so different, and even this, like you might feel like, oh my God, this friend is like overstepping or sometimes she can kind of feel like a lot, but I get it. She loves her friend. She just wants the best for her. And so I just love their little friendship. It's so cute. The mother though, if this mother messes this up for Emma, I'ma have a fit. It's like, mom, please get yourself together. At some point, you just have to chill. And I'm really hoping that, you know, this is that time. So we're gonna keep on chugging along and we'll see. Um, funny story. I'm about 16 chapters in and I am not loving funny story. Before I get into why, let me tell you guys what the book is about. Daphne's fiance Peter realizes he's in love with his childhood best friend Petra. So he dumps Daphne, he asks her to move out, and then the jerk goes on a romantic getaway with the new boo. So Daphne ends up staying with the one person who completely understands her pain, scruffy, messy Miles, who just happens to be Petra's ex-boyfriend. Yep, you heard that right. Drama! Not gonna lie, I absolutely love the premise of this book. I just wish that it had more romance. Kid you not, there's no romance in sight until chapter six or seven. And even then, it's more of a sprinkle. I keep finding myself drifting off. And when I'm not listening, I am not eager to get back to this audiobook. Although I like Daphne and I think she's a very nice person, I feel very detached from this story up to this point. And Miles just doesn't do it for me. He's kind of a background character at the beginning of the book. And once he's introduced, he feels a bit dull and lack luster. I am really hoping the second half of this book is better than the first. Chapter 19 we finally got to and I was like okay here we go with a romance. Now it's feeling like a romance book. Let me be fair to this book. I am in a life slump. So I am looking for something to give me the feels and make me smile and blush and just you know all those types of things. This is not doing that for me. This is just reading like a lit fic, a regular contemporary fiction book and I'm just like I need all the romance which is why I am loving this book. This this is giving me exactly what I'm looking for right now in this moment, in this season of my life. But anyway, back to funny story. So we get to chapter 19 and I'm like, oh, it's getting good. There's the romance. And then it was so sexy and so cute. And then it just stops. We go back to like a contemporary moment where he's talking about his troubles with his mom and his sister. And I'm just like, can we stay the course here? We could have brought all that up a long time ago. All this exposition could have been at the beginning. Now let's get into the romance, darling. But anyway, Anyway, this line finally got me blushing and I want you guys to hear it. Can I do anything? I ask. Now his smile softens. He touches my chin again. No, he says, this is enough. Ah! I'm not doing anything, I point out. The corner of his mouth twitches. Then why do I feel better? <gasps> Stop it! That is so cute! Oh my gosh, she says, can I do anything? And then he's like, you're doing enough. And she's like, I'm not doing anything. And then he's like, so then why do I feel better? You better spit that game. You better talk that talk, Miles, because this whole time, let me tell you, Miles ain't doing it for me. But that little line, that little moment, mm, that did it for me. Oh my 
God, my hair is so messed up and I have on bum patches. It's fine. This is so cute. Abby, you have no business writing something this cute. Oh, this is serotonin right here. This is so good. And I'm not gonna give you guys context, but this is so good. It says, I froze for a solid five seconds, then I bolted up and ran to the window. She was standing with an umbrella on the sidewalk under the street lamp. She had the rose bush with her. Sitting at her feet, the rain was falling softly and she peered up at me. I put my fingers on the glass. We'll try it, she said into the phone. I'll stay. <laughs> oh, this is so freaking cute. You guys, oh my God, this book is so cute. I had to run some errands, so I was like, you know what? I'll just bring my book so that I can read in the waiting room and oh, when I'm in the car. I love how they keep saying they like each other more than like. Clearly, they're alluding they love each other, but she says, we've never said that word. I've never said that word. And I think it's so cute when somebody finally has that moment where they realize I haven't been able to feel my feelings. What I am experiencing, this feeling for this guy is so new to me. It is so foreign. It's driving me insane. I don't know what to do with all this. She just has so much going on emotionally. Sometimes it's annoying. I feel like, oh, Justin deserves so much better than this. But then I also feel like she needed to experience this type of love from him, this type of admiration and consideration. Oh, he's so considerate from this type of guy so that she could know what love truly was. Because let me tell you, even with her mother being adjacent to her, she still just chose not to have a relationship with Emma. And so it's very hard for her to connect with any one other than her best friend and excuse the bump patch. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can see it. So as you know, I'm getting out of a life slump and I've been indulging in my guilty pleasure, which is ice cream. Oh, I love ice cream so much. But every time I have ice cream, I have an acne flare up. It's just the consequence that I have to pay. But anyway, back to this. It's so freaking cute. I only have 80 more pages to go. Husband has not called me, so I'm sure he's fine with Lily because it's Saturday. If I go home during the day on a Saturday, I am not going to be able to read because mom life. So yeah, maybe I'll just read here for a little bit until I get like hungry or thirsty. I did finish funny story. We'll talk about that in a minute. For now, let's focus on this and let's finish this. <sighs> Oh my God, it finally happened. She pulled on my heartstrings. So you can tell a lot throughout the book that she's trying to pull on the heartstrings. And I say trying because sometimes the conversation can expand a little bit more. It can go just a little bit deeper and then it doesn't. But she finally just made up for it. Oh, chapter 38. I am like sad. I am so sad. And I have so many thoughts because I love the relationship with her best friend. Her best friend does not play about her. And I have that type of demeanor sometimes it's like listen you're being a softy you're letting them run all over you so then I have to be the protector for you because ultimately you're just gonna get hurt and then I'm gonna be here to clean up the mess which is fine I will clean up the emotional mess with you but I told you so you shouldn't have opened up your heart to this individual and you wouldn't even need an emotional cleanup you know what I'm saying and so I just love the relationship with the best friend I feel so bad for her mother her mother is clearly dealing with bipolar disorder the book does not say that at this point but as some Someone who does have a loved one who does have bipolar disorder. I am very familiar with highs and lows and you know the idea of somebody going in to have treatment and so oh look at me getting emotional so yeah this chapter definitely hit me and then I just feel so bad for her she really had a lot of hope and she really thought things were gonna be different and they were not okay so Emma says I wish I could not care and then Maddie says I want you to know that your empathy is beautiful Emma I hope you never lose that I do hope that one day you get some boundaries though I am the queen of boundaries and so when people don't have boundaries it just Mm, I just pray for them that they learn to exercise that muscle because you ultimately teach people how to love you, how to treat you, and all that jazz. So anyway, she says, I do hope that one day you get some boundaries though. You cannot keep caring about her more than you care about yourself. Listen, when I say the best friend is a little bit like me, 
<laughs> I don't play about my friends and my family. I am a mama bear like no other, okay? And that is not just to my kids. If I love you, if you are my friend, listen, I got a problem with somebody treating you away. But if you did what I told you to do in the first place, if you were a little bit more protective of yourself in the first place, if you didn't have all that hope and empathy and compassion, darling, then we wouldn't even be here. Okay, clearly I'm just, you know, exerting myself in the story. But anyway, I'm loving it. I am eating this book up. snacks were needed so I just decided to come on home. My husband is here so he can look after justice. I was just getting a little hot and distracted in the car so I was like let me just go on home. I only have about 60 pages left but I forgot there was this other line it was so cute and so thought-provoking and I was just like oh have to share this with the vlog. It says not everything that comes out of crisis is bad. Sometimes your traumas are the reason you know how to help. Oh that is so freaking good, right? I had no intentions of annotating this book, but as I started to read, I was like, oh my God, there's so many different things that I can underline that resonate with me or that are just so romantic. And when I look back at this book, I would love to know the lines that just had me feeling so giddy and stuff like that. So just to warn you, if you want to have a pen with you when you read this book, that might be a good idea. I didn't, and I was too lazy to get up and get one. So I did dog ear a couple pages. It's fine, don't freak out for those of you who are like, you dog ear pages, yes, but I will flip them back up, so calm down. Another reason to love Justin. She basically just says like, why are you so good to me? And he's like, because you deserve it. Let her know, Justin. He says, you deserve to be appreciated, Emma. And then she says, I think I'm just used to feeling like I'm asking too much when I need something. And then he says, you're not asking too much. You were just asking the wrong person. Ask me instead. Justin, listen, honey, you better. Ah, ah, so cute. Wow, what a plot twist. I didn't see that coming. Oh, this is so good. Oh. <laughs> Not the plot thickening. Oh my God, this is so good. Oh my God, I finished it. And let me tell you, I started to get so emotional. Oh, I started to get so emotional. This is such a good book. Oh, Abby. Oh, Abby, I'm definitely gonna read yours truly. I don't think I can go right into that book, but I am definitely going to read it. I absolutely love how this book ended. And I just absolutely love how she fell in love with his mundane life, just being a part of a family and having a routine. Oh, it was just so good. And this part, oh so realistic. It says, I thought about the rom-coms that mom used to watch when I was growing up, the dramatic grand gestures that kept them together at the end. That's not what real grown-up relationships are like. They're like this, being mature enough to know your limits and adult enough to accept when someone tells you what they are, even if it breaks your heart. Listen, this book, highly recommend, honey, highly recommend. This was also so good and absolutely relatable. I don't want to give context because I don't want to give spoilers. This, oh, I have to share this. She wasn't my burden anymore and I hadn't even realized how heavy she'd been for me to carry because I'd done it for so long. I finally set her down and that started with me forgiving her. And just one more thing, I'm going to share one more thing. It says, the love story sold us the wrong thing. The best kind of love doesn't happen on moonlit walks and romantic vacations. It happens in between the folds of everyday life. It's not grand gestures that show how you feel. It's all the little secret things you do to make her feel better that you never tell her about. It isn't glamorous. It isn't all butterflies and stars in your eyes. It's real. This is the kind of love that forever is made of. Because if it's this good when life is draining and mundane and hard, think of how wonderful it will be when the love songs are playing and the moon is out. Stop playing with me, Abby. <laughs> You think I'm not gonna read another romance book by her? This was exactly what I needed to get out of that life slump. 
I ate this up. This is cute if you're like me and you just want something that is fluffy and lighthearted. It does have moments where it gets heavy, but it's not unbearable. It's not overly painful, but it does hit, okay? And it hits the way that it is supposed to hit. Other than that, the romance is just top tier. There's nothing about Justin that you won't like unless you just feel like, oh my God, this meat cute is just so perfect. And he just like falls for her and he's just like into her and it's like annoying to you, then maybe you won't like it. But I love that any man that that sees value in a woman and he is not afraid to go after it and he's not afraid to let his love be known for that woman. I find it extremely attractive. I am not in the mood to talk about Funny Story right now because I am just on such a high with this. We will do a final review for Funny Story in the next clip. Is it just me or do you guys also have like a favorite sweatshirt? Clearly all the tops and t-shirts and sweatshirts in this video you guys have seen time and time again in other reading vlogs and I love that for me. You guys are just gonna have to deal. They're my favorite, they're cozy, they're comfortable, and they're perfect for reading. But we are not here to talk about fashion and me recycling sweatshirts. We are here to talk about my final thoughts for Funny Story. I absolutely love Emily Henry's writing style. I love that Daphne was a librarian and that the story takes place in Michigan. I wish that we could have got more Michigan. Traverse City was mentioned in the book and Traverse City has some of the best wine in the state of Michigan. Gosh, I wish they could have went there and just indulged and had fun. And it was just so much more that I wanted out of this story. The story was not bad. I just feel like it didn't resonate with me. I felt very detached until the second half. And it's so funny because I loved Happy Place. I really did. I rated this book for stars but my first intro to Emily Henry was Beach Read. I'm not gonna tell you guys how many stars I gave that book but it just didn't do it for me and I think it didn't do it for me is because it didn't live up to the hype. People adore that book, they love that book, they rave about it, gush about it. It's everyone's jam especially if they are an Emily Henry fan. I didn't have that same experience. So Funny Story is actually my third book by her and it's so ironic that when I went and looked at reviews a lot of people that adore Funny Story they also adore Beach Read makes sense for me. I felt like the romance was missing. I loved the romance in Happy Place and I wasn't attracted to Miles. So I feel like that's another reason the romance just kind of wasn't hitting for me. I wasn't overly attracted to Wynn, but I loved the friendship group, the place that they were visiting. It felt as if this location was real. I loved the characters and the conflicts that they were navigating. I loved their love story up until they had a breakup. For those of you that have not read Happy Place, that's not a spoiler. That's pretty much the premise of the book. Speaking of premises of books, we're not here to talk about Happy Place. Let me just move this. I adored the premise of Funny Story, and it's definitely a funny story as to how they met. I would love to tell that story time and time again. Well, actually I wouldn't because don't be dumping me for your best friend, which kind of reminds me, I am rewatching Girlfriends and there's this episode on there where William was dating this girl and she's basically like, listen, I cannot date you because you are in love with your best friend, Joan. He's like, you kidding me? We're like brother and sister. No, I'm not. She's like, oh yes, you are brother. You're in love with your sister. And it was so funny. She's like, I could see us happily married, but then 10 years in, you realize that you love her and I can't deal with that. So that's pretty much the vibe of this book. I don't know why but I even love that Daphne and Peter broke up because he went on to be with a best friend and then we see a little karma going on in the book you know what I mean so I love that as well. Overall I love Emily Henry's writing style. I love her word choice. I love the descriptions of different scenes and I love the subtle romance vibes that she gives but I think with me I'm not always the biggest fan of a slow burn and it's so funny because I was like let me go back and watch my happy place vlog because I did do a vlog. Don't go watch it. Oh my god I just watched it back and I was like, oh, you could tell I was a beginner when it came to my booktube journey. <laughs> So if you want to laugh, you can watch it or if you just want to see some of my thoughts. But baby, thank you for the progress. But anyway, similar to Funny Story, I really enjoyed the second half of the book far greater than I did the first. With Happy Place, it wasn't that I didn't enjoy the first half. I liked it all the way through. It just moves a little bit slower. Funny Story, I just couldn't connect with these characters. I couldn't and it just wasn't enough romance for me. I loved the amount of romance in Just For The Summer. It's 
everything you want and need if you are looking for a romance book. Romance me, give me the feels. Funny story just didn't do that for me. At the end of the day, I liked the book. I did not love the book. There is an audience that is going to devour that book and they are going to love it. I just didn't have that connection with it. Would I read another Emily Henry book? Hmm. I think I would. And I actually have people we meet on vacation as a whole through Libby right now. I think I still have about three or four more weeks to go. Hopefully it doesn't take that long. That way I can really compare like, is Emily an author that I am going to like or not? No matter what, she's a great author. Sometimes a book just isn't for you. And I just think that might have been what happened here. So I do recommend it, but I have to ponder on who I would recommend this book to, okay? So for now, we are done with today's video. I hope that you guys had fun. I'm just happy that I feel better. I'm so happy that we have created this space where we can just talk about books and give book recommendations. I would love to hear what you guys have been reading and how you guys have been. So let me know in the comment section down below. Do not forget to prioritize self-care. and. I I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. We need to do more TBR takedown. You better stop it with all this cuteness. Oh, if I had the physical copy, I probably would have enjoyed it more. My oldest daughter is sweet. Ooh, she is sweet as pie. That girl is sweet. <laughs> Julia Whalen did a great job narrating. I just didn't believe that she was Daphne. You look so handsome. She will give you chance after chance after chance. I am not the same. Look at me, I'm just going on and on now. Eight minutes, look child, my hair sticking up. When I see people like that being taken advantage of or mistreated, it bothers me.